guys. So, just a little update for everybody. Uh, so, uh, yeah, let's see. So, I put a parachute on the car, obviously. Um, we're getting up to that speed. That, you know, better safe than sorry. Rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it type thing. So, um, the mount is from Motion. Motion Race Works. Um, it's a complete bolt-in deal. You don't got to do anything, customize anything. You just take off the rear bumper cover, and then you take the crash bar out, and then, then their mount bolts right to the car. And uh, I also bought it with a, a Stroud parachute. I got all this from Motion. So a Stroud parachute is a, th a 430 parachute. So it's good up to, like, for this weight of car, um, it's good up to, you know, 200 mile an hour. Um, and then you would need a, a double parachute, but you know, we'll never get up to that speed. So, um, so yeah, you know, pair, they make all kinds of different parachutes. You have to look at a chart and you'll look at the weight of your vehicle and the speed that you're going. And that'll tell you what type or size of a parachute that you need. So anyways, I got this all from motion. I also got their, uh, release cable kit, uh, which I'll show you on the inside of the car. Um, I temporarily put it here. Uh, hope you can see that. It's kind of dark in here. But uh, it comes with clamps to mount it to like a roll cage. So I mounted it up there. Um, so when I'm sitting in here, I can just reach up there, pull it, and that'll release the parachute. I think it's going to be good there. Um, but we'll test it and make sure it's comfortable there. You know, I could also mount it down here somewhere by the shifter where I can pull it that way um, if it ends up not working out up there but uh, you know we'll see how it goes but uh, I'll show you in the trunk here it comes with quite a bit of cable to uh, you know to do whatever you want to do with it um, put it back, back here need to clean this up back here but anyways, I just got it uh, you know, looped up for now because if I end up having to move that inside the car to buy the shifter, I'm going to need more cable. But when I figure out exactly where I'm going to keep it, um, you can cut these cables. You can trim them shorter. Um, and all it is, you see the jacket here and it's got the cable coming out. You go in the car and you release the handle like you're pulling the chute and this cable will suck back into the inside of the sheath. You measure what length you want. You just cut it with some uh, bolt cutters. Will cut through it pretty easily, and then it'll snip it off. And then you close the handle on on the chute, and then the you know the cable will come back out, and then you're good to go. You can just stick it through in here. Um, when we go to the track and we end up using this, we'll go through how to pack it. Um, I didn't know how to pack it before, but I've uh, I've packed it a couple times now. Um, and it's pretty simple once you get the hang of it. Um, it's not too bad. It's still a pain in the ass to compress the spring and get this all folded in and, and a little loop through it, but not too bad. So yeah, that, that was uh, something that I wanted to get on the car um, because as we keep going up the speed, uh, you know, it's just, it's a heavy car. So I want to be able to stop it. If something were to happen, the brakes fail a hose blows or whatever you know the brakes start fading you know at least i got something uh, for backup if i need it so we got that and then next uh we'll see that was i think that was the last video the last video is we went to the track uh you know we had issues with spinning off the line and you know i had to pull out of a bunch of power basically back it down to like 5 psi launch to get it to leave and you know halfway hook and you know to get it an okay 60 foot so uh you know like i said we we have strange single adjustables on it now and that's it basically there's no you know adjustable upper or lower control arms no anti-roll bar um, nothing back there so what i ended up doing is going and getting a uh, coilover setup from uh, Viking Shocks, which uh, if you guys don't know about Viking, Viking is uh, what's the best way to put this? Viking is like of a uh, you got your cheap shocks, you know, like your single adjustable, you know, hundred, hundred and fifty dollar rear shocks, you know, like the Stranges that are on it now, 
And then you got the super high dollar, you know, Santuff and uh, Penske shot. You know, you got the double adjustable super high dollar that are on like fucking pro mods and that type of stuff, you know, the $2,000 shocks. And then, you know, then you got stuff that's kind of in the middle. And that's where Viking kind of fills that gap. Um, the guy that runs Viking used to work for QA1. Um, he left there, went out on his own, and started making, uh, you know, in his words, a better shock for less money. Um, so these are double adjustable. Let's see if I can turn them. Get them up. Get you a shot of them. Double adjustable. Uh, Viking. These are the Crusader uh, line. They got two different lines. They got a little less inexpensive one that's still double adjustable, but it has, it's a, I forget what the name of it is, but it's a more of a street shock, uh, you know, an everyday driver type of shock. Um, but they're, but both of them are double adjustable. I think you got 19 on the compression, 21 uh, clicks uh, of adjustment on the rebound. Um, and then to get a coil over in the back of a Mustang, uh, UPR sells this kit that includes um, this bracket, you know, for the top where it goes up into the trunk, and then this bracket to mount to the uh, lower control arm bracket. Um, so you can get that, and you can do a coil over setup. Um, the shocks came with the coil over. Uh, you know, mounts here and uh, the spring as well came from Viking. Um, we're going to go, we're going to start with these springs. These are a 10 inch, 150 pound spring, which is, uh, you know, is a drag specific spring. You know, if you're going to be riding these on the street a lot, you probably don't want to go with that light of a spring. Um, but for what we're doing, you know, 150 pound is right about where we're probably going to end up being at. So, so we got them. Um, these are your, uh, built aluminum, uh, spherical bearings for the rear end. The 8.8 housing has a rubber bushing in the housing where the upper control arms connect. Um, you know, you get a lot, as they wear out and even new, there's a quite a bit of play, which, you know, that's designed into it. They want a smooth ride and, and a, you know, a stock vehicle. So they put rubber in them. And, uh, you know, for drag racing, that's not ideal. When you leave the line, you got to take up that slop in the rubber before you get any kind of reaction of the car. So you put in a spherical bearing so there's no, you know, there's no give. It's as soon as you, you, you release the trans brake, it's, it's going forward. You know, there's no, no slop to take up. So we got them and we got to get them installed. Also got the, uh, shop cleaned up here because it's amazing how much more room you have when, uh, you, your shit's cleaned up. <laughs> Your damn garage looks twice as big uh, when, when you know when shit's put away and all that stuff. So I need to get better at that. But when you're in the middle of doing a bunch of work, it's a pain in the ass to stop and put everything away, and then turn around and have to go grab it to use it again. But just so I show that. All right. Yeah. So. Uh, Couple things that we got coming. Uh, the I got double adjustable lower control arm, um, double adjustable uppers, uh, anti roll bar, and oh adjustable lower control arm brackets. So all that stuff is coming so I can make adjustments on the rear end to wherever we need to be. Um, then we're all coming from uh, TRZ Motorsports. They make a lot of uh, a lot of suspension components for Mustangs and for other uh, types of vehicles. Uh, make super nice stuff. So um, I got that stuff ordered last week. Uh, you know, just ship it out. Uh, I think it was Monday. I shipped it out. So it's supposed to be here tomorrow, actually Thursday. So uh, as soon as we get that stuff, we'll be able to uh, tear apart the rear end of this and get everything switched over. Get the roll bar, anti roll bar, uh, you know, welded in, and get that all set up, ready to go. We'll get the shocks put in um, and the uh, spherical bearings put in the rear end. Um, and then at that point, we can go back to the track again. Um, i trying to think if there's anything else. Yeah, I think.
think that's it, guys. So, uh, yeah, just a, just a little quick update. It's been a few little while since I, I put up a video. Um, we're just waiting on parts, basically. So, uh, so like I said, this stuff's supposed to be here Thursday. So as soon as that stuff shows up, uh, we'll probably hit it. You know, Friday, maybe Saturday, we'll come out here and get the suspension squared away in the rear so that we can, um, you know, hopefully go to the track and make. Sure. Yeah, so the idea is, you know, you could have, you could have made the single adjustables uh, work a little better. I would have put some time into it, but, uh, you know, where I'd like to go with the car, um, we, we needed a good double adjustable shock and, uh, you know, suspension on the rear, too, to be able to make adjustments for different types of tracks. Um, if we end up going to a radial, uh, you know, that'd be nice to have a, a more adjustment in the rear, uh, you know, to make the thing stick because, uh, you know, with mod motors uh, or any small cubic inch motor in general, in a pretty heavy car, you know, 3,000 pounds or more, the motor doesn't make a whole lot of power down low. So you, you gotta, you know, I don't know what, what, what I'm trying to say is you gotta leave the line with a, quite a bit of boost. You know, if you had a big cubic inch motor that had a lot of torque down low, you, know, you could leave on five or six pounds. And still, you know, do a 120, 130, 60 foot and have a good run. But that, you know, pretty heavy car, small cubic inch motor that doesn't make a lot of power down low. You know, you got to use something to get off the line. You know, either gearing, which in this car is a 327 gear, which works good for the turbo. So I don't want to change it. We may eventually go up to a 355, but, uh, you know, Currently, it's got 327, so there's not a lot of gear to get it off the hole. So you've got, what do you have left? You know, you got boost. Um, so we need to be able to have, you know, 10, 15 pounds of boost um, on the line to be able to leap hard to get that 60 foot time that we need and to get it moving. So, uh, you know, with the setup that's on the car right now, there's no way possible if we can leave on anywhere near that amount of boost. I mean, I was hitting it to like eight pounds of boost and it was spinning and I had to back it down to five. Uh, so, you know, like I said, with some adjustments and some playing with it, trying to figure it out a little better, um, you know, we might have been able to leave on eight, nine, maybe 10 pounds, but um, I want to be able to, if I need to, leave on, you know, quite a bit more. So it's just the, you know, the kind of natural evolution of the car. Um, when we initially started to build this car, it was going to be more of a, street car, you know, that would go to the track a little bit, um, and then, you know, as things progress, you know, as, as all things do, it kind of, kind of snowballs and it turns into a track only car, so, but, uh, so, so that, you know, that's why it's got the single adjustables and that stuff, because it was more street oriented in the beginning, but now that we're doing mostly drag, we need to, uh, you know, step up the game with, uh, some better stuff, so, so that's the idea behind that, guys, uh, Everything's pretty much good to go, so we're just waiting on the parts. So when they get here, we'll uh, we'll get out here as we get rolling and we'll uh, install that stuff. But uh, but that's it. That's all I got for you guys today. Just a little update, and uh, just stay tuned for the next video. We'll get the suspension stuff uh, all installed, and we'll be back to the track, uh, get this thing dialed in the rest of the way, and then we can start going to some races. So all right, guys.